who is responsible for our online safety? Is it the government? Is it cybersecurity companies? Is it the banks? Um, or should we all be taking cybersecurity safety in our own hands? Don't go away, we'll be right back. Today we are talking to Dr. Zoran Mitrovic about cybersecurity. And welcome back. This is episode 10 of The Conversation Online Safety. I'm your host, Brigitte Limbanda, and we're talking to Dr. Zoran Mitrovic about cybersecurity today. So here is a scenario that will set the scene for our conversation with Dr. Mitrovic. An employee receives an email from their CEO directing them to immediately purchase gift cards using their personal security guard. The email convincingly describes an urgent need to have this done immediately and to bypass usual security protocols. And the company will reimburse the employee. Further, the employee is directed to reply to the email with the gift card security codes to the CEO for safekeeping immediately after the purchase. The employee does as they are directed. And when the employee then later submits a reimbursement request, it comes to light the CEO never made this request to start off with. What happened here? The employee fell for a fairly low tech but very costly scam. The employee spent thousands in personal funds and now the company has to decide how it's going to respond. Should they let the employee be personally responsible? Should they reimburse the employee? And what corrective action can be taken against the employee? Let's invite Dr. Mitrovic to the show. Soren, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, greetings to you, Brigitte, and the viewers. I'm going to say a warm welcome to all our viewers um, on Facebook and also welcome to our viewers on LinkedIn. If you've got any questions for us, we are monitoring the comments both on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Um, Dr. Zoran Mitrovic is a cybersecurity specialist, and so if you have any questions for him, please do join us in the conversation. Let us know where you are watching from. It'd be great to know where you are joining us from. And also put hashtag live or hashtag replay so we know whether you're watching us live or on the replay. Zoran, you heard the scenario about this employee um, receiving an email, thinking it's from the CEO, uh, making the purchase, and now trying to get a reimbursement, and then they discovered that this was a, a scam. So looking at the scenario, should the employee be personally responsible? Should the company reimburse them? Um, what corrective action can a company take in this instance? What is your opinion of this kind of scenario? Well, uh, let me start with the philosophical uh, answer. Well, it depends. It depends. All depends. Yeah. <laughs> depends. Uh, first of all, uh, if uh, that employee is 
aware and trained to recognize that kind of schemes. Uh, if there are some cyber security policies in that organization, there are two things. If policy is there and employees not aware and not trained, uh, they cannot uh, claim uh, his responsibility. But if policies are there, if policy is are uh, uh, spread throughout organization properly and explained, and the, in the employee, that employee is trained properly, then it is his fault. Otherwise, it's organizational fault and they cannot yet claim yeah, a huge responsibility. So, yeah. Do you find that um, in your experience that often policies are there, but they're not enforced and often employees are not really trained to understand the policies and why they're so important? Yeah, it is fairly uh, um, often that people have a policies and they are just gathering dust somewhere. So there are two actually uh, different uh, cases. One is that there is a policy, but not uh, uh, not known to employees, good policy not known to employees, and there are some uh, some sloppy policies that people don't want to read. So uh, it is um, actually organizational responsibility to first to make uh, conscious policies that will uh, inform employees what is allowed, what is not allowed, and it does not use uh, jargon, but plain English that people can understand. And not to be too long that people are just putting off by that length and they just switch up and they, they do not read it. But so, but there's often, often policies are not read by, by people. Uh, if you now make an, uh, uh, survey and ask people how many of them are really read your, uh, uh, Facebook policy, privacy policy or the other policies, they will say yes. When you ask them what is there, they, they cannot explain. So, that's the case in organization as well, organizations as well. So it's kind of, you know, a scenario where you, the employee as the human being, is can be the weakest link in an organization. Yes, definitely. I mean, it is well known by both cybersecurity professionals and hackers that human, humans are the weakest link in cybersecurity. If we can... If you can say in percentages, about uh, 80 percent of uh, successful hackings are happening to people, not through technology. Technology is advancing, yeah, but again, if people are there that you're using technology, and, and hackers know that, yeah. Then cybersecurity uh, uh, chain is the weakest than humans sitting. So mm. uh, we have to, to pay much more attention to human beings. To, Outside the insiders, uh, etc., then to technology. By the way, technology can be patched. Humans, <laughs> very difficult to be patched because so the yeah. So it's not so it's not for a lack of um, technology per se. It's it's more the the human you know the human connection that is the weak link. That and and perhaps companies should spend more time making sure that um, the employees understand. So how exposed would you say businesses are to social media security breaches? We live in a, an environment where people are active on their devices all the time. Um, you know, you have events and where the, the, the natural or, or it's become the norm to bring your own device to yeah. events, to meetings. Um, Bearing that in mind, you know, employees are, they may block Facebook, for example, um, just Facebook as, as one of the social media platforms. They may block it on the company intranet, but you have staff um, bringing their own devices, sometimes bringing their own laptops, sometimes bringing their own um, smartphones, and then they may connect to the company's Wi-Fi. So, how exposed are businesses? Very much, very much. It depends on their connectivity, and, and many businesses are very connected to the internet, yeah, so exposure is uh, huge. But let me just make a digression. Uh, 
what actually hack is exploit yeah, hack is yeah, by the way there are different hackers yeah white hat yeah, gray hat yeah, black hat hackers we're talking about those so called black hat hackers that uh, make a harm to people uh what they exploit they exploit your yeah, human weaknesses like a fear for example somebody tells you your your account bank account is compromised please urgently send your your details <laughs> And people just fall for that, yes. Uh, send the password and uh, username, etc., etc. They exploit the obedience, uh, like it was the case in, in your scenario story. Uh, people are obedient, and then particularly uh, when authorities in question, uh, directors, uh, managers, uh, presidents, whatever. And they do stupid things, uh, not thinking critically. Uh, then uh, greed is also exploited, yeah, and uh, helpfulness. People are some, sometimes, sometimes very, very helpful, unnecessary helpful, et cetera, et cetera. So that's used by hackers. Going mm -hmm. back to your question, uh, what, how they use social media, first of all, in, in many ways, but the main way is for reconnaissance, for getting information about uh, potential victims. So that's why it is very important to protect organizations and people on social media. And, and uh, there is no hacking like in Hollywood movies. Yeah, you know, that somebody sits here, uh, you know, uh, using laptop or, or cell phone and just frantically typing, typing, and he is in, and, and, and that's hacker. It's not that. All successful hackers do their homework. Yeah? And the first task is reconnaissance, gathering information about people. So social media are perfect platform for that. And what's happening, going back to your story, uh, there are few uh, type of phishing. I don't know if people are aware about that. There is a phishing, there is a spear phishing, there is a veiling, there is a uh, uh, smishing, uh, uh, using SMSs, there is, <laughs> there is a vishing using a phone, etc., etc. I'm talking about this here. Uh, phishing is when they, they send their emails, uh, uh, bogus emails in bulk. But spear phishing when they when they choose a particular people to attack, and that's uh, uh, from your uh, scenario stories. They do it usually usually uh, Fridays when people are ready to go to the weekend, and they then send a message that looks email that looks uh, or message that looks uh, uh, legitimate, and people are thinking much more about about your uh, weekend and, uh, and and being obedient etc cetera, etc. Cetera, and they are not checking, uh, and then they can do uh, dangerous things so social media uh, uh, platform is a perfect way for data collecting i think you know people need to or companies need to be more aware that you know social media isn't going to go away it's it's here to stay and that the employees are active on social media um and that, you know, perhaps they should not try and, you know, I think trying to forbid people from accessing social media is like daring people to do it. And they're going to do it anyway. You know, people are going to find ways of working um, around organizational cybersecurity policies. So what do you think is the best way then to train employees to have a security mindset and to mitigate the risk of them trying to circumvent organizational security policies. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Prohib prohibiting it is not an option. It would be like uh, prohibiting uh, alcohol in America in the nineteen twenties. Yeah, so it just uh, went uh, under the, the radar. You know, that it was illegal, but. Uh, People still uh, drinking and buying, etc., producing, etc., etc. So, uh, technology in general and social media in general, they are neutral in their nature. But the use of technology in social media is not neutral. It depends how people use. So, you are completely right. It's not going to go away. People have to learn how to use it, how to use it beneficially. That means here yeah, to use it productively but uh, to it securely. So uh, we're talking about, for, for example, we're talking about the uh, uh, fourth industrial revolution. Th if there is no secure use of any technology, you, uh, including social media, there is no benefit. We cannot mm -hmm. talk about 
because it will be, uh, let me just uh, give some metaphor. If you have a good cow that produces 25 liters of milk and, and just after that, they just uh, uh, kick it uh, and, and spill it, there is no, no any benefit here. So uh, what is the best way is to educate people. First, to make them aware. But that awareness is not enough here. Uh, we should uh, rather use the term applied awareness, if I can say it that way. What does it mean? It means you are aware, but you're not applying here. There is no benefit. Uh, let me again yeah, do some comparison. How many people are aware that driving and using cell phone is prohibited and dangerous? I suppose many. Correct. But how many? How many applying? Uh, Not too many. You see, we, we've got yeah, a carnage on our um, roads in South Africa. And, uh, so, so the same is with cyber security. If people are aware, but not applying that awareness, it does not mean much. Or if, even if uh, they are trained, yeah, but not applying uh, the skills and, and, and knowledge, uh, it does not mean much. Then. Your direct question was how to rectify it, how, how, what, we, what we can do uh, to, to enhance the cyber security in organizations. The simple answer is culture. Changing culture mm. and introducing cyber security culture. Uh, please carry on. Please carry on. You wanted to ask I, li I, like, I like that, you know. Um, changing the, the, the culture of the organization where there's awareness to such an extent that people realize that, you know, it's a mindset change. It's not just a fact of, you know, just having laws and regulations isn't going to stop people. But if you can change their mindset about why it's important and how that relates to um, their job security, for example, because if the if the company's uh, security is compromised, it can compromise the business and it compromises their job security. So if one can somehow uh, find a way of creating a culture where people are constantly aware of cybersecurity, that could be the way that we need to go. Yes. Yes, yeah, that's the way to make a, a cybersecurity resilient organization. But uh, uh, yeah, it's easier to say than done, yeah, because we are dealing with humans. And changing culture, culture, culture uh, primarily means yeah, changing uh, people' behavior, and yeah. then changing behavior depends on on habits. So. Again, we, we're going back here, yeah, cybersecurity, much more about psychology and sociology than technology. But they must combine, of course. They, they, must, uh, they must combine everything that we know and what we use to make a yeah, cyber resilient organization uh, and nation sphere. Uh, for example, people use bad habits of people. Say, say it, yeah, you've got yeah, uh, people that get their yeah, messages on the screen that certain yeah, applications are not secure to use. And they're still using that and they're making bad habits because that, that application helps them to do everyday job, but it is not sanctioned by an um, IT department and actually belongs to uh, so-called uh, shadow IT. So it's very dangerous. Yeah. And, and hackers are using that. Let me just tell you uh, this. Yeah. Some research showed recently that uh, daily uh, hackers distribute about 156 million phishing messages. Of all over the world, 160, uh, 56 million messages. And, uh, but uh, if I can correctly recall, about 80,000 people fall victims. Wow, it, wow. And it, it, it is increased from last year to, to, to this year, and the increase about 300%. So, so bad habits are exploited very well. Unbelievable. I want to move on to, to my next question, but before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to um, our audience, Melina from Germany, Elsebi from Namibia, Sebastian from Australia, um, and also Tish, she is also in the US somewhere. Welcome to everyone there. 
Um, and Sebastian's made some very interesting comments. He's basically underscored what you said. Um, Sebastian says in their, in their brand, they give people the freedom. We let them know the responsibility and that they trust them. And it has created a culture that keeps the brand and employees happy and trusting. But it's, it's, it's having that constant engagement with your employees. It's not a once off saying, you know, here's, here's the list. These are rules and regulations. And that's it. It's not a one and done kind of uh, process when it comes to cybersecurity. And unfortunately, I think um, the trend is that companies don't spend time, money and energy in cybersecurity until they have a security breach, at which point it is too late. The breach has already happened. You know, it's like car insurance. Should I get car insurance? Should I get personal insurance? It's too expensive until you actually need it. And I think that's the kind of thing that happens in companies. Um, they sort of, you know, I can't afford this in my business. Yes, you have to. You know, it's it's a must because once the breach has happened, it's too late. You're completely right, yeah. But uh, the key word here is a trust. If you can trust your employees, yes. But when breach happens, then the legal repercussions come then you have to go to, to court and you have to prove something here so trust is a uh, fine trust is uh, a, a good base very good base for any kind of security including cyber security but it must be regulated yeah that aspect of organizational cyber security you have to have a policy you have to have a policy how they can prove that the employee did something wrong like uh, from the beginning of your your story of your scenario they cannot do that yet there is one one rotten apple it's enough yet to spoil everything else here so so they have to have regulation trust is a fine and i am in a favor first of all you are having a good team you are trustworthy team but there must be regulation otherwise yeah people good people can can uh, do stupid things or, or dangerous things because of their circumstances changing circumstances it could be could be some addiction it could be financial difficulties it could be um, um, blackmailing it could be anything yeah. so so it cannot be uh, completely based on trust trust yes but must be uh, uh, sanctioned somehow back to, back to regulation so i'd like mm -hmm. to move on to another um issue or, or scenario our social media platforms and um i'm going to single out facebook because it's the largest social media platform yes so Facebook allows people, again, people, to create fo fake profiles with ease. Um, so scammers notoriously operate with free reign uh, on the Facebook platform. They are allowed to send out endless friend requests. Currently on Facebook, there is no limit on friend requests. So scammers do basically what you call phishing. They send out thousands of friend requests on a daily basis to unsuspecting victims to befriend them. Um, syndicates have fake accounts. Um, and so one account is shut down. They've got a hundred other spare accounts on the, on, you know, and in order to ply their trade, they use stolen pictures and stolen identities to lure unsuspecting victims. Um, hello, Marcello on LinkedIn from um, Atlanta. Thanks for joining us. So they use stolen pictures and fake identities to lure what they call clients um, on Facebook. So my question to you is, how difficult is it for a social media platform like Facebook to prevent this by verifying their users and to prevent the creation of fake profiles? How difficult is it for a company to do, to have a verification process in place? Uh, it is still very difficult because Facebook has got about 2 billion users, if I'm not mistaken. Um, manually, it, it is impossible, of course, yeah. That's why they're using the artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, to, to try to control that. But yeah. Uh, in my mind, yeah, technology is still in, a, in, in an infant phase, yeah, in a baby phase, yeah. So, 
So they, as much as they um, use artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, they cannot control uh, so so big amount uh, of of, uh, of, uh, of users uh, about user user accounts. Yeah. So I don't think they can, not yet. They can yeah, control that yeah, properly. So uh, that's why they introduced that yeah, that you have to report yeah, somebody that scans you or trying to bully you or whatever or it's, uh, uh, fake news, etc., etc. So it is much more now uh, some kind of uh, of mutual effort, users and providers, uh, social media platforms, social media content, content, etc., etc. So only together we can do something, but. Uh, it is not advisable to rely on the Facebook or other media to uh, mind your security, your privacy and your security. So again, yeah, people must be aware and trained somehow, not, not just organizations. I've, I've written yeah, some article about, uh, I did some research uh, in the South Africa and the media about uh, citizen awareness. That's a disaster. People and organizations are not enough aware but citizens are completely unaware. And please, everybody's got your uh, smartphone now. Now the smartphones are getting uh, cheaper and everybody's got smartphone using, then accessing your uh, social media platforms. So, so it, it must be awareness among citizens and among uh, workforce if we want to uh, to create a day that digital uh, society and, and cybersecurity culture at national level. We're talking about the uh, fourth industrial revolution. Without uh, uh, trained, properly trained and aware citizens, what can go wrong? Uh, everything that we do can be just jeopardized. So, so th that's my uh, little bit uh, broader answer to to simple question. Yeah, uh, Facebook cannot do it alone, or other social uh, social platforms. So basically, you know, it, it, it is the responsibility of each person. Now, I know that one of the challenges I've personally encountered, and I know this is a challenge for many others out there who report fake profiles, is that Facebook has used as a bot system. Now, I can speak from personal experience where you report what you can see and what you know is obviously a fake profile, um, but that submission to Facebook isn't seen by a real human. Um, they use a bot to to monitor those reports. And literally nine times out of 10, you'll get a response back from Facebook's bot saying that the, the profile um, doesn't qualify to be deleted because it doesn't break Facebook's community standards. But that's a bot response and that's a failure on the a you know, a technology failure. Um, so for me, it highlights the need to do more um, to prevent the creation of fake profiles. And secondly, to report fake profiles more efficiently or to make the handling of fake profile reporting more efficient. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but we, we're going back to, to our discussion. That bot is actually uh, uh, working using artificial intelligence and machine learning. So it's just a baby machine that cannot understand uh, what you're actually saying. They definitely cannot do that. Yeah. If there would be uh, uh, 2 billion people uh, or 200 million people yeah, receiving our complaints, yeah, it would be a little bit different. Yeah. But yeah, technology is, as I said, yeah, still not that, at that stage that it can recognize yeah, really what we say and what we want. Yeah. That's why we have not to rely on technology. For example, if a good car maker uh, makes a car and you buy that car and they say this is a safe. But if we as, as a driver are yeah, doing uh, dangerous things, yeah, they cannot protect us. So. It's just a yeah, loose yeah, a comparison, but that's that's it. Yeah. So so it's our responsibility how we drive the Facebooks yeah, and the Instagrams and the LinkedIns, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know, it always comes back to um the human element being the weakest link and um the fact that we need to be aware of the fact that you know, as humans, 
we need to 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 become more cyber savvy my next question or scenario to you uh zoran is facebook ads is a huge part of its revenue model and businesses use this you know they um they put adverts on on facebook because there's so many users what are the chances that this could increase the risk exposure for businesses and entrepreneurs um, because the ads then are not just flashed to bona fide users it's also flashed to fake accounts managed by scammers what is the risk exposure there well it's the same uh, risk exposure like uh, on other internet platforms um, although um, the social media are getting more and more popular for example, Facebook has introduced some policy that prevents uh, uh, advertising uh, some organizations, people, companies that are already uh, they're marked as a uh, as um, dangerous or, or risky, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But but again, it's just policy. Uh, what people do with ads, with any ads, social media and any internet ads, they can exploit it. Yeah, they're adding something to call um, uh, adware or malware in the ads. So you you can, for example, uh, advertise your business, and uh, hackers can just copy what you have advertised and impersonate you, and just add that some malware and just spread it. Yeah. And people are just copying and pasting on Facebook. You say somebody has a uh, uh, two thousand uh, friends. Yeah, uh, please, two thousand friends. It's not possible. Yeah. They even don't know ten percent of those people. Yeah, what they do and uh, what their intentions and etc. etc. So. So people are just copying and pasting. Yeah, the other people are just clicking. They don't have a the time. They want to see how many friends are there, and they just don't have time. They just click, 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 and they spread their spread their malware, malware using ads. Then it can be used in many ways. And just spread malware, it's like a back door to your system, like uh, sending ransomware, like uh, uh, um, acquiring your system using uh, using your system as a bot yeah, in, in a botnet. Yeah, in, for, for distributed uh, denial of services attacks. But by the way, recently I, I was re uh, writing an article uh, titled uh, um, My Trust is Under Attack. Then people are not reading. They said to me, ah, stupid thing, uh, who is interested in my trust? Uh, and if I, if I burn uh, two pieces of bread, yeah, who cares? <laughs> and I had to explain to them, it's not about uh, um, of course, we're talking about smart toasters that uh, that are linked to to the internet. Yeah, it's not about your toast. It's about uh, access to your to your network. The same thing happening uh, when people redirect you from from your Facebook ad to some malicious website, and then they just get into your network and they can do anything. Yeah. My my next question to you is: you know, people are very are still very ignorant about um, scamming and the process of scamming and cyber crime. Generally, you know, when people talk about getting scammed, they think of one lone scammer that's sitting in an internet cafe somewhere, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Scamming is never done in, in isolation. Scams are run by syndicates. So even though they use a, a, a picture, um, that is not representative of one person. There's a whole organization and a syndicate that's, that's behind all the, the, the scamming process. They use mind control. Um, and it's a very, it's a very well run operation that, you know, is run to military precision. And so once the scamming process begins, there's very little that, that can, be done to stop the scamming process once it gets to that point. And people like doctors, nurses, school teachers, policemen, um, psychologists, all professional people, you know, have fallen victim to, to the scamming process. And yet no one seems to be concerned um, or no one seems to know enough about this type of of cybercrime because when people hear about scams they think about people who are ignorant people who are gullible people who are lonely people who are stupid what do you think can be done to raise the profile of cybercrime beyond people thinking that it's just stupid people that get scammed 
Yeah, you know, again, you are completely right. Yeah, you know, as we discussed a little bit earlier, it's about reconnaissance. Yeah, people are not doing it yeah, just yeah, by chance. Yeah, good hackers and, and organizations, syndicates, and and particularly uh, um, military hackers here yeah, from U.S., from the U.S., from China, from Russia, and from uh, North Korea, Israel. Yeah. They're, they're excellent. Yeah, you, you cannot protect uh, yourself against them. Yeah, but but again, yeah. Uh, uh, the simplest answer is patch the people, patch the people in organizations at national level also. Yeah. So we have to 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 have a good good uh, um, aware campaign, then training, then uh, we have to remind people always. Yeah, mind is that kind of substance, if I can call it substance. Yeah, that forgetting. In one hand, it's very good. Yeah, we be forgetting yeah, bad things. <laughs> in the other hand, yeah, we forgetting nice things. And and why we say remind, mind remind. So so we have to have a yeah, you have to have a yeah, uh, well designed campaigns to talk to people about yeah, uh, about beneficial use and uh, risks of technology, use technology in organizations, in private life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So so. Uh, Again, yeah, what happened to people when we do too often those campaigns, we talk too much about that, yeah. People switch off. People switch off. They they get tired of the negative things. So campaigns must not be negative. They must be encouraging. They must be uh, promoting. Uh, uh, must have that yeah, positive connotation. What happened? We Every day we are bombarded now with some dangerous things, yeah. Third World War, yeah, it's about to, to start now. Some asteroid is going to hit the Earth, yeah, that is going to destroy, destroy Earth completely. Some deadly disease is spreading yeah, like a hell, etc., etc. The same with cybersecurity. We're just bombarding people with the, with the dangerous thing. What happened? This and that, ransom away, etc., um, etc. Et so, so what people do? They shrug off and switch off. That we call yeah, cybersecurity fatigue. So we have to, to find a fine balance introducing cybersecurity and productivity. So you want to do your job. You don't want to fight here with, with technology. So uh, there is uh, some notion of uh, cybersecurity by design. Cybersecurity that, that allow people to do their private things, they, they, they work, uh, and uh, then uh, to make them secure. But at national level, we need uh, those nicely designed cyber security campaigns that will explain people in a not frightening way what they can do to protect themselves they will use technology anyway so mm. so that's what what should happen at the at the national and international level yeah, so. So, so the communication should be engaging and ongoing it's not a once off thing you know we've got the set of rules and it stays in a cabinet somewhere um that you remind people of only when you employ them um it needs to be an ongoing awareness and as we mentioned at the outset it needs to become part of the culture of the organization um so that you get the buy-in from your employees and that you know cyber security is at the forefront constantly um but you've got to you've got to do it in an engaging manner so i want to move on to a next scenario um and again i am staying with facebook simply because it is the largest social media network and it seems to be the weakest link in cyber crime um, so facebook's terms and conditions forbid amongst other things um harassment um threatening behavior, fraudulent behaviors, deception, misleading information, misinformation, um, anything that violates privacy and, and public rights of others, and illegal activi activity. So these are all things that's already built into Facebook's um, terms of service. But it would seem that even though it's in its, in its terms of service, if it was enforced, we wouldn't have people getting scammed um, on Facebook. So my question to you is, if it seems that Facebook isn't 
enforcing its own terms of service by keeping people safe or users safe on its platform, could this possibly make the platform liable for a failure to protect its users? And should users have an expectation that Facebook should keep them safe? Um, generally not. As you explained uh, just now, yeah, some bot is responding to your to your complaint. So, <laughs> so platform cannot do that. Yeah, but all these uh, uh, rich platforms and, and Facebook is uh, one of the richest yeah, organizations in the world. Yeah. And the other ones, yeah, they will do anything to rid of liability. They are not liable. They will do anything. They will put you policies. They they will. Even if they are guilty, they will engage uh, the best lawyers in the world. Yeah, we as individuals cannot cannot match it. So, so we have not to rely. My point is not to rely much on them. They do what they uh, can do and they, what they say they can do anyway. By the way, they they are doing uh, many other things. Yeah, our privacy is in question. They're selling our data. You know what happened with the recently with the Cambridge Analytics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what we know. So we have not to rely on them. We are uh, voluntarily uh, uh, supplying them with our information, even private information that can be dangerous. They cannot prevent us to do that, yeah? and they don't want that liability. So you, you know that when you go to Cape Town and you park your car somewhere and, and you see that, that sign uh, at the entrance that say you're parking at your own risk, your own risk. So you paying you you you, <laughs> you know and they're not li liable. That's a similar thing. Yeah. You're using Facebook. They can, this is a policy. By the way, their policy is a little bit e easier to understand than uh, Twitter policy because it's it's written a little bit more in in uh, plain English. Yeah. But, but again, yeah, they make it that way that they cannot be liable. They they now paying some fines here yeah, because of uh, European regulations. Yeah. You know that, but it is uh, it is now giants are two giants. European Union sues Facebook and they pay. But as in an individual, you cannot do that. Yeah, you cannot make them liable. No, it's not not easily it is. So so again, yeah, take your security in your hands. This is message to users. I know. You know. I think. There needs to be so much more awareness created around this because sometimes, you know, you look at the posts that people make on Facebook, you know, they disclose the exact location, they talk about their children, they talk about their immediate family members, you know, they disclose personal information and people are not um, aware that this puts them at risk, you know, they basically put their entire lives on the, on the social media platforms. And so, you know, people need to be aware that scammers are there. You may think you're posting it to your friends, but scammers are watching that information as well. And it's going to compromise your safety, your family's safety, your company's safety. Um, so, you know, people just need to be a lot more aware. Moving away from, from, from the social media platforms, um, a bit scammers again it's syndicates they're well organized they work with military precision um they work 24 7 they've got technology that people are not aware of they have voice altering technology they have got access to whatever they need to manipulate us so Bearing this in mind, in a company scenario, scammers are able to manipulate the, the, the to and from fields in, in emails. They, they're able to copy company stationery. Um, and that is coming back to our first scenario where, um, you know, fraud is committed because the employee wasn't, or the employee seem to think that the email came from the CEO. So this is the kind of thing that's very easy to do. What are the best practices that companies and employees could follow to avoid falling victim to this kind of cybercrime? But well, there is something called a clean table. So first of all, do not leave anything, uh, anything that uh, that contains your information, private information, passwords, etc., etc. Not on your desk, not on your computer screen. Uh, 
don't dispose that you're just you're throwing that in a dustbin because there is something called uh how can you use it? something called uh, uh dumpster diving they go to rubbish company rubbish uh, and they get uh, some some information from uh, from some documents that are thrown etc etc so that's the first thing yeah. and, and again yeah, again people must learn uh, how to use uh, use technology safely like anything else so there is a no uh, silver bullet not panacea there is no panacea that it, it's contextually dependent uh, how we train people in uh, financial institutions is not the same like uh, how we train people in retail that's a big difference here or, or high tech etc etc so uh, Again, yeah, people mu must go back and learn about uh, cybersecurity culture. Introduce that in the companies and in the in, in the nation, in the whole nation, citizens. So, so there is a no no so-called best practice. If it would be some best practice, we will just all switch to that. We, we wouldn't uh, experiment with anything else. You know, just switch to best practice, and that's it. Yeah. But there is no such a thing. We just call it yeah, in, in academia, uh, predominantly we call it a best practice yeah, because it, it is kind of prevailing, but it can be com completely wrong. Yeah? I believe that everything is contextual, that every organization and every nation must see how people use technology, and then to teach them how to use it securely. I don't know if I, if I answered your question completely. Yes. Yes, you did. I, I think, you know, one cannot reiterate enough how important it is to um, to get educated in cybercrime um, and that it has absolutely nothing to do with, um, you know, how, you know, how educated you are. Because, you know, you can have a very, you can be educated in in anything, but if you if you're not educated in cyber crime or scams, um, just by virtue of being online, in any shape or form, can make you vulnerable to cyber crime. And so you need to know that if you're active on the internet, you open yourself up for cyber crime, and you need to be aware of this, so that we develop that culture um, of awareness and being safe online because you can trade safely online but you just need to be aware of it that's that i think is the biggest risk is the fact that people have this belief that they are not at risk that's um, correct yes, yes, carry on, please. yeah so so basically if you uh if we can change that mindset that you are at risk by virtue of the fact that you are online um and and also move away from the line of thinking that stupid people get scammed. It's not stupid people, it's anyone online can get scammed, irris irrespective of your knowledge in other areas or uh, field of training or education. So that to me is one of the things that I would like to get out there. Is there anything that you would like to add in closing? Yeah, actually you're right, we're going back here. Uh, I must confess now that cybersecurity pro professionals get hacked because we are human beings. We can be tired, we can be in any condition and not to be here and now and click on something and what oops. So it's not about uh, education, not about intellect, it's, it's about habits. Again, you're changing habits, changing behavior, changing culture. Humans are not easy to touch, but we have to uh, do it uh, cleverly, not to put them off, which is not easy, but that's one way to, do, uh, to deal with human and to touch them properly, to give them a proper knowledge, proper awareness, but apply the awareness to say that if it is not applied, it's nothing. But, but again, yeah, I want to stress again, uh, People do not have to fear technology, any technology. People have just to learn to use it beneficially and securely. I think that's a great note to end this conversation on. Um, Zoran, thank you so much. Really appreciate your, your time and your insight. And to our audience, I want to say thank you to each one of you who's been watching this on LinkedIn and um, on Facebook. Thank you for for joining us. Please share this information. It's something that anyone and everyone that on the internet 
uh, needs to know about. So thank you for watching. Remember to do good stuff. Remember that um, just by being on the internet, you open yourself up to cyber, cyber crime. And let's keep each other informed and aware one conversation at a time. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank Goodbye you for now. Bye.